Lewis, tell me this. Which quarterback is most NFL ready from this class? Because there's quite a few. Yeah, you know what? Look, I, I think when you're talking about which guy do I think in the right situation could come in and really play at a high level and have a year that makes people, I don't know if necessarily, you know, looks at them the same way as they looked at C.J. Stroud this year, but which quarterback could maybe kind of duplicate that kind of performance in the right situation with the right kind of synergy? And I really do think it's Jaden Daniels. I think he's the kind of guy who, because of how he has continued to develop from year one to year two when he was at LSU, the kind of mental horsepower that he brings to the table in terms of his ability to take information and utilize it in real time and consistently be able to play within the structure that, of the offense that is being taught to him, utilize that information, mix in his ability to ad lib and mix in his ability to play off, off structure or out of structure and off schedule. I think those are the kind of things that translate very quickly, obviously, to the NFL. I think, obviously, with all these guys, it's going to be very much so dependent upon the relationships that these young men strike with their organizations that they go to, the same way you saw C.J. Stroud strike that kind of relationship with the Houston Texans and with the Miko Ryans and Bobby Sloak in particular as offensive coordinator. I think all of them have the ability to kind of like play out of their mind, so to speak, and have us all sitting there going, wow, just look at how these young guys are just kind of like coming in here and hitting the ground running. But I think Jaden is just uniquely qualified with his physical ability, his mental makeup, what he's already been through in his career, and quite honestly, spinning it forward from talking to him, the frame of mind that he is in right now. He just looks like and feels like he's in a great place to where he understands what it would take in order to play at a high level from day one, understanding while at the same time what he still needs to improve on. And I think balancing those two perspectives is critical, and Dan can speak to that as a quarterback. But I just think that he he's in a great place right now. And I'm just hoping that, as he told me yesterday, that wherever he goes, they pour as much into him as he's willing to pour into the organization, the locker room, the quarterback room, and the community that he goes to. Because he's ready for this challenge. And I know there are some teams who right now are sitting there grinding their gears trying to figure out how can we get in the position to draft mm. him. It's, a, it's going to be a spectacular draft here in April once we get to Detroit. It's spectacular. I mean, it's going to be fireworks at the top of the draft. Yeah, I, I love that. So my answer is J.J. McCarthy. Uh, okay. Before I explain why, two things. One, I hate this term NFL ready. Um, I don't care who's NFL ready, to be honest with you. The job of these teams and general managers is not to find the guy that's going to be most NFL ready. It's to find the guy who's going to be the best over the course of a decade in the NFL. For years, I've hated this term. And the second thing is, I think, and, and Lewis has been doing this a lot longer, and certainly in the scouting world than I have, this is the hardest quarterback class that I've certainly evaluated trying to figure out who I think has got the best potential to play at a high level in the NFL. It's the hardest class for me in the five or six years that I've done this. But the reason why I do think J.J. McCarthy is equipped skill set to go in and play at a consistent level. One, the difference between college and the NFL as a quarterback is you go in college, everybody's around the same age and everybody has basically the same daily experience, okay? You go into the NFL and you go from 21 years old to 35 years old and not everybody has the same daily experience. So you better be capable and ready to walk in as an adult in the room. I think J.J.'s experience at the Michigan program allows him to do that. The second thing is you have to have an alpha personality to control that locker room and to lead that locker room. I think being around Coach Harbaugh gives McCarthy the opportunity to do that. Now onto the field. No quarterback in this draft had more control of the line of scrimmage when it comes to the run game stuff. Getting in and out of the checks, that's a huge part of the NFL game and it's different than college football. What guy gets us into the run, the right run player out of a bad run play? Um, J.J. McCarthy was part of a huddle. We, we, we see huddles in the NFL way more prevalent than we do in college football. J.J. McCarthy was under center way more than uh, most guys in this draft. That's a bigger part of the NFL nowadays than it was a couple years ago. Uh, play action pass, J.J. McCarthy ran a ton of it at Michigan. So there's a lot of elements that I think J.J. allows to like step in 
and play at a good level, that doesn't mean that I think J.J. is going to be the best, and that's the task. Find the best guy, not the guy that's most NFL ready. Lots of discussion on the state of the Bills these days. Our own Robert Griffin III posed the question on social media the other day, is Stephon Diggs essential to Josh Allen's success? Dan, let's answer it. How essential is Diggs to Allen's success? Yeah, huge. I mean, Steph has four straight seasons of 100-plus catches. Josh Allen in the last four years has become one of the two or three best quarterbacks in all of football. That's not, you know, a, just an abnormal coincidence. Uh, I think he's got four straight seasons of just about 1,200-plus yards in each of those seasons. And even a down year last year, I think he had 109 catches. So he's paramount. A, a number one is paramount for Josh Allen. You know, I think the two things that, you know, probably make this somewhat of a conversation or maybe the three things are – there's been noise of unhappiness, I guess. You know, Stephen A has pointed out that he has wanted out. Um, everything you see body language-wise, I think, disagrees with that. And in, in the way his teammates talk about him, disagrees with that. I think the second thing is the drop last year in the Kansas City game. Huge drop and uncharacteristic of Steph. And then the third thing was yeah. his usage last year. Although the catches were high, he didn't go deep as much last year. Certainly not in the second half of last season. So... He's essential to Josh Allen's success. If and if, you know, Steph isn't there after you know Gabe Davis has moved on to the Jags, the Jags, excuse me, like it would be a massive hole if Steph wasn't there. I think he's essential to success because of how this roster is built right now. This wide receiver group is frankly lacking. I mean, I like Khalil Shakir. You bring in Curtis Samuel. It's yards after catch threat. But with Davis gone, you need Stephon Diggs to be the player he was in the first half of last season and, yep. then of course, prior to that with Buffalo. Because in the second half of the season, the final eight regular season games, Dan, uh, he averaged fewer than five catches and just over 40 yards per game. Yeah. That's not good enough for this team based on their aspirations. Now, Josh Allen, I thought, still played at a high level, so I don't think he is uh, like a creation of digs or entirely dependent on him as a player. But they need him to be a number one because there's no other number one on this roster right mm -hmm. now. And by the way, as we head into the draft, no um, while I can say on one hand, you need Diggs to be a number one, if I'm Buffalo, and I'm not saying this means Stefan is on the decline or he's forcing his way out, but you do need to look to add another wide receiver in a very wide receiver rich draft as a result. Oh, I totally agree with that. I wouldn't be surprised if Buffalo took wide receiver in round one. I, I mm -hmm. honestly, and, and I know the class is yeah. deep. I certainly believe in round two, I would make the claim that they don't have a number two wide receiver on the roster. I do think Curtis is good, but again, he's a, a gadget guy. He's a get touches for a guy. And, and so now the two tight ends are fantastic players and, and Kincaid is going to be an awesome part of their future. But, you know, it's not all that different, MK, than Kansas City last year. Like Kansas City takes Rasheed Rice yeah. in the second round and Patrick develops him and all of a sudden it becomes a focal point of their offense. I think that in those first two rounds, wide receivers, mandatory. But uh, if, if Steph is on the roster, I have no reason to assume he's not gone. I'm not implying anything. But if Steph is on the roster, you know, for this team to contend back to the AFC Championship world and or <clears throat> potentially getting to the Super Bowl, he's going to have to be the Steph he was really 2020 to 2023.